art students. Brian Proctor back again with another drawing lesson. And today's lesson is going to be on hands, not just any regular particular hands, but hands holding weapons. Because I know a lot of you guys out there have characters that use weapons. And so I decided to do a video on hands and the different ways that hands would take shape when holding weapons. So today's weapon is going to be on uh, holding guns. So yeah, you should have realized that. Uh, and I'm going to do a couple more. The next one is going to be on swords and knives. And I think the last one is going to be on clubs and staffs. So yeah, this is going to be lessons on drawing hands because I know a lot of people do have trouble drawing hands. So I decided to do this lesson in detail. All right, so let's get ready. And this is a BB gun. I'm not, I'm not a violent person. I'm just drawn that way. All right, so let's get on with the lesson. All right, let's get this lesson started. So these are going to be the positions that we're working with, and I might throw, throw a couple others in there for good measure. So before we get started, if I start to slur my words, it's because I burnt the roof of my mouth yesterday with a Pop-Tart. Those things are dangerous. You know, you heat the Pop-Tarts up and that jelly gets hot and you bite it and it breaks apart and it gets on the roof of your mouth and it just burns the heck out of you. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm suffering from Pop-Tart burn right now. So, if my words start to slur, that's because that's why I'm hiking. So, first thing is, if we want to draw the hands holding something, we're going to have to know a little bit more about the hands themselves. So, let's take the hands and let's break it down a little bit, and then we'll go from there. So, the first thing you want to do is get a pencil. Take a look at the hand. The hand is basically a square. If you take this off, you have basically a square. So we'll do this square. And it would help if I put my glasses on because it's a little dark in here. Now, the one thing about the hand, the square part, is um, if you put the wrist on it, if you look at the, the wrist from the baby finger, you, it goes straight, straight up and down. Now, it won't do that here because you have this part coming out. So when you do the hand, you do this because the thumb comes out. You have this part here that comes out. So it's not like this. It's not going to be the hand looking like this. It's always going to have this piece coming out. So now that you know, and it's going to come out at the thumb. So let's take this square. Let's break this square in half. Break it in half separate it into half. So you have two parts of the palm, the meaty part, which is this part, and a little narrow part, which is this part. And if you look at this, this goes up halfway. Let's just say about halfway to the palm. So if you want to break that, you have this here and it actually comes off of here. That's why you have this piece here. And then that actually goes into the thumb. So you can have your thumb out here. Now your thumb is two pieces. You have your, your joint here, which would be where that circle is. You have another piece and another piece. So you have this little piece coming. You have a joint right here. So you have this piece coming out here, and you have that little curve coming out here. Now this other piece of the palm is narrow, and it can actually go all the way up to the baby finger. So it's going to be like that. Now, you split this in half. Now for all those critics that's going to say it's not straight across, no, it's not straight across, but we're just doing this because it's going to have some curve to it like that. Split that in half. Now, you have your four fingers, two on each side, which makes it easier. One here, one here, one here, and one here. It just makes it a little easier. Of course, you know it's going to be rounded like this. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the this finger, your, your pointer finger, is going to come straight off of here. No matter how you flex that, it's pretty much straight off of here. So it's not going to come out here anytime. So it's going to be straight. It's going to be straight on that line right here. This one will come out. This one will go out. So you can do this. And this is just, it's just a little extra knowledge. And of course, you know, the bird finger is a little longer and this finger is not as long. So when you flip this over, it's going to be a rectangle. You will see 
part of the, let's see if I can do, I can't do it, part of the, um, this part of the palm, depending on which side you, you look at, if you're looking at it and the thumb is down here on the opposite side and the baby finger is closer to you, it's going to look like this. Looking at it from the front, which you should know, as I said, it's going to be curved. It's going to be curved. The hand is going to be curved around some to some degree. Split it in half. Two, two, two. And then there's your fingers. Now, I think that's about all we need to do to cover the hand. Basically, I'm going to, it's the palm, which is the most important, and the thumb. And this part here that breaks up. So now... Let's get to drawing hands holding weapons. And I'm, I'm thinking, is there something else that I miss? Because this none of my none of my uh, videos are scripted, and this is why it might take me a week to do another video. Because I'm thinking, okay, what can I show you guys? What what do you guys need when doing comics? What do you need? What what, what hard parts are you on? So, and I, I don't sit down and try to write a script on it. So the first thing you want to do <clears throat> is. It's always best to draw your weapon and then wrap your hand around the weapon. So if my gun is here, because you want to spend more time designing the weapon and then trying to get the hand to go around it. And this is this is this is typical, um, a typical um, position for a gun. Now. The hand, that's that's what I was going to say. Looking at the hand sideways, it's going to be square again. Let's say we make it square again. And then here is your wrist. So what you want to do is you're, you're going to have to bend it down like this. And I'm doing too many lines. like that. I'm going to bring it like that. Curve it like this because your fingers are going to come when you when you sideways. I can't I can't um, when you have your palm or your hand it's going to be straight that square but when you bend it you're going to come down at a down angle. Even if you open your fingers a little bit you're going to have that down angle. So if you're doing your fingers your fingers are not going to come straight out like this. Your fingers are going to go down just a little bit like that because they're they actually they're curving they're curving in on a downward angle they're not coming straight back they're this is straight back but they're curving in like that so they're going to always come down at this angle like that so then you have your one two and your three like that now this finger, I'm going to spit it on my paper, this finger or your, your pointer finger is going to be shorter knuckle-wise than your middle finger. So this one's going to end about right here. This one's going to come out longer and these two are going to start to come back. So that's the same thing when you're holding a gun. Now let's just, let's just continue on with this paper since I've got this far. So if I have my gun here, This one thing that you're going to do is this finger is going to come straight up because it's going to be, be positioned to pull the trigger. Which means this finger is naturally going to come down like that. And I'll just put a little bit of the other piece of the finger, depending on how big the gun grip is. Because this your joint is going to be right here. This finger is going to be under there. And I'll redraw this in a second. Um, what was I going to say? Because your, the, your, I don't know what that's called. The, 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 the trigger cover has got to come between those two fingers like that. So this is a, this, you have space between there. So this little trigger guard will fit between your hands. So... Doing that again, you have your hand here. It's going to sit in the palm, as I'm saying. Anything you have is going to sit in your palm. So if this is the gun, 
the gun is going to actually sit, or the handle of the gun is going to sit in your palm. I mean, you, you already knew that. And then your hands just have to wrap around um, what's sitting in your palm. And when you draw hands, usually when you draw hands in comics, and you just, you use two bends like this. So let's say this is the thumb, this is the hand. You just use the two, the two bends in the finger, the two joints in the finger, which actually we all know there are three joints in the finger. And usually when you're drawing comics, your hands are small like this, so you don't have to draw the three joints or the two joints, which makes it bend, which make it bend three times in the finger unless you're doing something a large thing a large hand or your hand is holding something that's the only time comic artists i'm not gonna say we or i tend to do three bends in the finger if you're holding something so when you're holding a gun you're going to have to use that extra joint in that finger or it won't look right so I just was completely lost at what I said. So the hand is a square, of course. As we say, the hand is a square. Now, when you bend the fingers, of course, the fingers have to go down like that in that angle. Now, that first finger is going to go straight. The second finger is going to come here, one, two, like this curve it off and another thing is you're going to have to be able to keep these little rectangles make them round so it would look something like this because that joint is short you see that other part of the finger and I think that's the part I was getting at there and keeping it's got to come back remember it's got to come back like that and this finger is going to go up more into this, into that other finger. And then your palm, like that. And then if you, if the, if the handle or the, the grip is wider or, or thick, the, the butt of the gun is thick, you'll see that other bend in the finger. Depending on the type of gun you have, and then it comes back, but it will be covered up by the the grit or the, the, the butt. The butt, the handle, come on, Brian, wake up. It's early. And as I say, I have to apologize for this ink job because I jumped out of bed and I started inking. I didn't warm up. I just started inking, trying to get this out while it was fresh in my head as to what I wanted to say and your knuckles. And then when this hand is stretched out, the only time you see your knuckles are when you bend your fingers. So if this one came out, you wouldn't see that knuckle. The knuckle's flat. Third part, I was going to say. And as I said, this is not scripted. I, I, I sit here and I think about what I'm going to say and then draw it and then hopefully I can remember all those things that I wanted to say. Um, okay, straight on like this. Straight on. So... Here's your two fingers, and here's your thumb. When you turn your fingers to the side, you will see this, this finger here, the, the little bird finger, sticks out up more than this finger. If you see that knuckle come here, my lighting is terribly bad. You will see this knuckle here. So this finger is always going to do this. Here's the knuckle, and then here's the finger. You always see that knuckle there. You, the other, you won't see the other fingers, depending on the angle, but you will see these two fingers and that knuckle, or should I say you won't see these other knuckles here, these two, because that's just the way it is. This finger here is always higher than the rest. So when you make a fist, you see that you see this knuckle is low and that knuckle is high. So if you did a fist, 
like this, you have this finger, you're going to have this knuckle and this finger here that comes out, good old finger Brian, like that. And you won't see that. So this will stop, this knuckle will come up and stop like right here, whereas this one will go all the way back into the hand. And then your thumb is down here somewhere. So that's just food for thought, especially when you're drawing um, hands. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this finger will come all the way down past that, but I try not to do that. Especially when you're doing small fists, I don't do a lot of detail. I just get the shape of the fist to where it needs to be, to where you can recognize what it is. So, remembering the shape, square first put your you're wrapping this square around whatever you're holding then cut it once 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 that bends it's going to take that angle it's not going to be straight across so bend it down and then your fingers come down like that and then your thumb is up here, however you want to place your thumb. You want to give the thumbs up. Yay, thumbs up. We did a good job. Yeah, so that's one. Now, again, the hand, a front position, the hand is square. And this is why I get on people about um, drawing your square circle and your triangles. Before you start drawing anything seriously, master those three shapes, square, circle, triangle and then put them in perspective as much as you can and just keep going with it as much as you can any when you're home doing nothing just draw your shapes so this is the front facing so let's say my gun is here put your weapon first and then wrap your hand around it so which hand is this going to be this is going to be this is going to be the right hand. I'm right-handed, so a lot of times I'll do right hands. Is this right hand? Let's just do it. So your knuckles, again, your knuckles are going to kind of curve here. You're going to, your, your the first joint, this joint in your hand, whatever you hold, wherever you point it, these knuckles are going to be aiming directly forward. So if I'm having a gun or something and I'm pointing it at you, these knuckles will point forward directly at you, regardless of if I have like a cell phone or whatever. They're going to be pointed at you, and that helps you to draw when you... It helps you... What's, what's the word I'm trying to say? When you're positioning something, because... You have your three joints, one, two, well, three fingers, two. And the hard part is getting the size right because we're so used to just drawing the two joints in the hand that when you have to throw that third one in there, it's kind of weird because you always make this first bend in the hand a little longer than it needs to be or a little further than it needs to be. So if it was realistically, if I'm drawing this hand, it would have to stop right here where I bent it here, then it would bend here, and then it would bend there. But being so used to drawing the two bends like this, I had this bend way out too far. So when you start drawing your bends in your fingers, you have to get it right, or that's gonna make the finger look too long. So, and even I have to deal with that sometimes, sometimes, all the time, because I don't really draw a lot of close fingers. So, where I was here, so we're gonna bend that. We're gonna have that joint, and this is why I was saying, because you have to have that joint, it's gonna be pointed right at you. So, we'll break the fingers down. One, we have, we have the, I'm gonna use all four. One, two, three, and four. Let's make them a little square. And then you're going to have that other one here, that other joint, two, three, four, and then some of the third bend. And of course, the same way, it's not going to be square. It's going to take that curved shape like this, like that. 
So if you're drawing a fist, you're going to have that curved shape like this in your knuckles. And then, of course, as I said, this finger, you see how this joint here does not line up with the rest? It's always higher. So if you're drawing a fist, you're going to have this joint here and this joint, like I'm at the club, this joint. So um, it's going to be bend, bend here and the rest are going to go all the way down in that curve. And that's how you do a more of a powerful, powerful fist. And then you can have some... some of that second second joint showing you don't have to depending on the angle of the fist like right here it bends and you still see a little bit of meat here and this is hard to do when i'm looking in the monitor you still have some of that so what i'm saying is you can have just a little bit of that finger showing in that second joint you won't see that other one because it's bent it's bent into your palm it's going into your palm so you just see the, the first bend and maybe a little of the second bend but the thumb covers that up so we're not doing fish right now but same thing with a gun in your hand and the reason you couldn't put a gun in this hand is because that fist is closed too tightly let's just say if I'm gonna do a staff and what my one of the videos I'm gonna do is holding a staff and this is pretty much like this but because this fist is closed so tightly the knuckles are not pointing in the direction that you're pointing that weapon in so if I open my hand up to hold something then those knuckles would be up actually I got the gun here so you see how those knuckles are open now if I took it out and I made a fist the knuckles are pointing this way, whereas they need to point that way. Any kind of weapon you have, whether it be a stick or a gun or, a gun or a sword or something, those knuckles are going to point towards you. So this is why this fist is too tight to actually hold a weapon. So you're going to have to, let's just do this joint like that. So this one is going to come here. This is going to be your first bend, the second bend third and your fourth and then the, the other one and when it when you bend it it actually as I say it goes down it doesn't go up it goes down so then you're gonna have that bend here this one here this one here and uh, this one actually comes in a little bit this this baby finger was the only one that comes in where everybody else is going in a different direction this guy right here is kind of a middle man he stays in the middle but this one comes in like that and then sometimes you can have that third that third um, part of the finger right here. So the thumb would come straight across and down like that. Two bends, one here, one here, like that. So what am I saying? You won't see the palm because whatever you have is going to be curved around that finger and stop somewhere in that palm like that. Same thing with a gun except this one is going to come up more. This finger is going to come up more and then bend because it's going to be holding that trigger. And I'll, re I'll redraw that. But one thing I want to say is fingers do not come all the way up. The breaking of fingers do not come all the way up to the knuckle. If you look, you see how far this, like almost halfway up. When I started drawing, I used to bring my fingers all the way up here because I didn't know nobody really showed or, or told that your fingers don't do that so yeah your fingers don't do that so it stops right there and sometimes it makes it a little Y depending on your skin you have that little that little Y shape in between there so yeah that is that so again drawing this um, hand here's my gun right here so I want to do this one finger I'm going to do this piece here first this is just me holding that the other one because you have that that guard a trigger guard so here's my face of my gun however the gun is shaped as I said you you would have you should have more fun designing the gun instead of having to work on your finger so this finger is going to come 
up here into that that trigger guard like that hopefully you can see that why is this blurring my camera does like to do that I like to do that and then you will see the other part of that finger this is the first second and third joint here the other one is going to come down because it's, it's got to go below that trigger guard so remember your knuckles are going to be pointing so your knuckles are not going to be way over here they're going to be kind of close to the side so one two and the third one so it's going to be like this curving around one two and remember this one kind of comes up then you have your other finger going back it's not going to go straight and back it's going to go back it depends on if you had something fat like this phone and it would have to go straight uh, get an angle straight back and then back like that but because it's curved it's going to go in a backward direction I hope this is uh, making sense to you guys so it's going to go back like that instead of straight across and then as I said you might see that part of that third joint going here and then of course the thumb comes across because it's in that palm and then that, that whole palm is like right here and then that first first piece here is here so you got the second and the third one like that and try to break your joints down especially with your thumbs so it's going to be a little like this I have my, my um, knuckles remember your, your line does not come all the way to to the end of your, your into your knuckles so it's going to be like this curving here here curving here and here curving here this is going to be your your um, I don't know what you call this little piece here but that's what it's going to be there and then maybe joints right here and then curve around again here joint here and curve around again here joint here and this is the shortest finger so it's, it's short so it's not going to go out any further so it's going to curve around right there and this is the hard this is one of the hardest positions to keep make these fingers round because you're taking something round and you're bending it and it's just hard to keep it looking round unless you do like some rounding off lines here and then this finger here it comes up and this finger is once you this finger is going to stay straight to the degree to a degree to hold that trigger so when you're doing here is you're doing basically a straight finger it's going to bend here and then you have a, the, the other bend here and then of course as I said the thumb comes around and it holds that gun so do, again doing um, your perspective so if this cylinder was straight at me it would look like this if I tilted it a little bit it would look like that same thing with that finger so this finger is going to be tilted a little bit then I'll throw another cylinder on top of this cylinder and then I'll bend another cylinder on top of that cylinder which would look like it would go back like this and the cylinder is straight so it would be it would be open like that but you're going to have that bend there so it's going to look like that so it's going to be eh, 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 just like that uh, what was what, what's, what's with the sound effect i don't know this is going to look like that that's going to be your your first finger and all of this all of this is depending on the angle that you hold your gun now if you took your gun and you did it straight like this grab the gun right it's kind of hard twisting my hand up like that it would, it would look like that, but if you twisted it down just a little bit more, you'd see the top. If you did it like that, you'd see more the bottom. So it depends on the angle that you are holding the weapon or your character is holding the weapon. But as long as you understand the bends and the shape of the hand, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to take two seconds and stop this camera.
because as I said, after a while, it just, the image kind of blurs because I have it on autofocus. Because if I didn't, it would blur every time I move my hand in and out. It would automatically try to focus on it. So the autofocus, after a while, it to me, in my monitor that I'm looking at, it'll blur the image. So I'll stop it and restart it. All right, so that's much better to me because I see clearly now the rain is gone. I'm aging myself with these old songs. Okay, so we did the side, did the front. Let's try to do the bottom. And I need my paper. So we did this side. Let's, let's do the opposite side. Did I do the opposite side? No, I did not. So we're going to do the opposite side of this inside part. Again, draw your weapon. Because if you're drawing a person, you want to know where the gun is so that you can put the hand around the, the gun and then your arm, however you want to put the arm. but. You want to draw the weapon in this position first. You don't want to draw the hand and then say, oh, I didn't want the weapon that low or, or is it too high. You want the weapon drawn first. Then you can draw the hand around it like so. So I don't know, this arm would probably go back and forearm, bicep, and then that. And he's turned to the side. And this is just his weapon. Bam, shoot you. Yeah. Anyway. Drawing the weapon first, whether it's a gun, a uh, rifle, or whatever, and maybe I'll do some of the rifles, because, but the rifle is the same thing, except the first hand, the other hand comes up, your fingers come up to hold the bottom of the rifle like that, and because the rifle's long, you won't see any of this hand here, you probably have the thumb, but I don't really think you even see the thumb when you do a hold a rifle. I don't own any rifles. My goal is to, is my bucket list, but uh, I wouldn't call it the bucket list. I like airsoft. I really, I love airsoft. This is why I collect like BB guns and stuff because when I was young, my mom wouldn't let me have a BB gun. So as I got older, I started collecting BB guns and then my son and I let my son and his friends play with them and they would break them all up. So I collect them to a degree. I'm not rich yet, but I want to have a wall. Like when you see the movies and the spy opens the little, secret compartment on the wall and he has a rack and he has all these weapons that's my dream so I want to fill my room up with some airsoft guns but I'm not going to shoot them just to be able to come into the drawing room and look at it and say ah oh, that, that looks nice but yeah I'm not an airsoft fan I don't get out there and get in the mud and shoot at people just to have it and it's great for reference because I'm a comic book artist so okay here's your gun let's make the hand a little longer just because and here is your trigger guard. So now, again, square is going to fit in the palm. Bend that down like this. There's no fingers on it yet. So as you curve, as this curves, this, this, you can say it's almost straight. But as it curves, it's going to curve in. It's going to curve in at that angle. So I'll do it in pen, pencil later. Let's do blue because... It's hard to, to see when I have red and red. So we're going to bend like that. Like that. And actually, the thing is, what used to get me, and it's, I still can forget sometimes, is it's got to go up higher. Because I was always thinking when I was young that the gun actually rides on this finger. It sits on this finger, but it does not. It sits down into the finger. Where did I just do with the gun? Okay, so this is me grabbing the thing. It's not riding on this finger. This light sucks, I'm telling you guys. For some reason, my camera will get lighter and darker as I move. You may have noticed that in some of the videos. But anyway... It's not sitting on this finger. This finger is coming up along the side and holding it. So which means if it was sitting on the finger, it would be like this, but it's not. It's way up into the finger. So when you draw your gun, you have to bring your hand up into your gun. So if this is my gun here. Put the gun down, Brian, put the gun down. 
my, my finger has to come up because it's riding that palm and still holding that gun. So then that first finger, and this might be too long, that first finger is going to be in here. And as I said, you have to watch how the size of your finger or the size of your gun, but I'll just say this first finger is going to come down just a little bit because it's going to come down into the, the gun like that. And then you might have that other finger bent. You might have it. You will have that other finger bent to go into that trigger guard like that. So here's your, here is your trigger guard. And I guess that's what they call it, a trigger guard. So here's that one. And then that other finger is going to come down here. I'll bring it up closer. I'm going to do the first joint, second one, and the third one. So what you have, and I'm getting, I'm getting lost in translation here, is basically what you're going to have is these fingers wrap around that handle. I've got to do this with ink because I'm so lost with all these colors. And I said each one going in. So let's do this with ink. It's the wrong pen. 005. So this thing is going to come down and you'll see part of that. And then it's going to go in. Remember, your fingers are going to actually go down. Second one. And your third one. It's not going to go that far because it's, it's really short. So your first finger is going to go like this. You're going to have that joint. It depends on how, how, <clears throat> how big the gun is, how long your hand is. You're going to have that second joint. And then that third one is going to come actually come in to your trigger guard like that so if you did the fingernails it would be like this and I usually don't do fingernails on um, hands unless it's a female but if I do do a fingernail here's your finger bent in I'll do the very front maybe a little side and then the back and that's all I do for a fingernail so you have this and then this goes back, and then you have your palm, which is in blue. Remember, you split that in half. You have your palm, which comes almost halfway up. It comes off like that. So then you want to do your, it's going to be straight, and then you're going to have your thumb. So you got your palm, your other palm, which goes to the baby finger comes around the first joint, second joint, and the third joint. And that is how you hold from the from the side, from the, from the yeah, from the inside. And then this hand, this this when you squeeze that, can you see this? You this goes straight back, but when you squeeze that, this meat juts out. A little bit right here now you don't have to because it's a it just squeezes so it comes down to a little point like that so yeah so but as I say it's best to draw the gun and then uh, put your finger around the gun which this should be like here somewhere and a lot of this you won't see so when you where your bend is your actual handle should be like that and then you have your joint because you don't want to have your fingers way bent up here and the butt of your gun is way back there so be weary of that so if you if you need to pull your fingers back more you just have to show that joint bending that joint This is not the good writer, this is the good writer. So, we're getting your fingernails. And so my hand's gotta come back, so this is going to be where it bends to show that 
it's so big that I had to show the other joint and say it's hard for me to twist my hands in this position versus just seeing this very front part if that makes sense but again square angle it this first finger is going to be up here this other finger is going to come down and most times you can just get away with just drawing the three things but if it's a close-up of the gun then you're going to have to bend that that finger fingers and I think this one comes up to a degree and then your fingers your joint joint and then your because he might not be holding the trigger it could be just uh, on the side of the gun like SWAT does or police do they only put the finger on the trigger when they're about to shoot so there you go remember your your halfway two fingers on both sides your round your palm comes up and out of the square this one stays into the square and your thumb has the two joints one two and then the curve down in there so all right we did the what did we do we did the back we did the front inside let's do the bottom which is probably the hardest one to do now a lot of times you don't you won't show that unless somebody's shooting up in the air directly up in the air or um, the camera angle is looking up at that person's hand so again let's draw the gun first crooked gun and this is going to be the um, handle the butt of the gun the, the bottom of it where you put your clip in and this is your trigger guard right here so so what so first thing you do is it's going to fit in your palm as I said so we're going to draw that square here this is the side of your hand and remember as I said like this when you draw the side of your hand it depends on which which side you draw, you're going to see this bottom part of your palm or the fat, fat, meaty part of your palm. I mean, that's kind of hard to do because I am, I am, yeah. You see this meaty part right here, and you see this little thin part that goes to the finger. So when your hand goes in it, you're going to see some of that meat. When your hand goes in it, when the gun goes in your hand, you're going to see some of that meat. So you have this, which is riding on your palm, which is pushing up against your palm. Then you're going to have this part here because your thumb is going to go around here. So you're going to split that, that, and it's a little curvy piece here. Your fingers are going to be one on top of the other. So this hand is a little big, but I'm going to go with it and I'm just going to redraw the gun a little bigger. I'll make it bring it down a little bit. And that's the one thing you have to play with your hands, you have to learn it first. So this one is going to go out it's going around this this butt so just remember that the butt of the gun the handle of the gun it's going to go around it knuckle facing the front the first bend in your finger pointing forward like the gun so it's going to go around and then like that because it's actually gripping that palm that's your first finger the baby finger the next one instead of coming out here like we did the like we did this and this one shows more than this this one is going to be the one that shows the most the other ones you won't see or as far as the high knuckle so the next one is going to come in it's going to follow that remember that the um the the first bend is going to be pointing forward it's going to go here and because this finger is really bigger you will it will cover that it will cover that it will you'll see it you'll be able to see it and then the third finger is going to come in some more up same thing with and it's just going to basically mimic this one so you have your joints like this I always keep 
pencils in my hand. I don't know why I can't throw them down. This one's going to be sticking out. This one's going to be in further. And this one's going to be in even further. So these are your three that's holding your handle of your gun. Like that. So the fourth one, <clears throat> your fourth finger, is not, it's going to be way in here. It's not going to come out here. It's going to be way in here because this one is straight. And then it's going to curve in and then straight because it's going to be holding that trigger. Like that. And that's why I say you have to play with the hands and the gun size because when I first started this, my hands were always way bigger than the gun and I had to adjust the gun, but then you kind of meet in the middle somewhere. And then of course, your thumb, you have this part. So you're gonna have that one joint here. It's coming out from the thumb and it's gonna be round and we gotta keep it round. And then this other one is going to sit like that. <clears throat> and of course these fingers are going to cover that up. But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to draw through just because so it's going to be like this. And then you have that just pushing against that palm and that palm's going to come around it like that and then you have your wrist. And then you would see some of this, these wrinkles here. So, recap. You have this, which is your one side of the palm. The other side of your palm is here. First finger up, knuckle pointing in the direction of your, that your weapon comes down. One, two joints, three joints. Same thing. It comes up, one, two, three joints. Same thing, comes up, one, two, three joints. Right there, your thumb comes out, it's broken, it's two pieces, one piece, and then two pieces, like that. And then your gun fits here, inside your palm, and then your fourth finger goes straight out, and you can make it go straight over if you want to. It depends on holding the trigger. If, you're, if you have a gun and you're not, Hold, pulling the trigger, your finger is going to be out. But if you're pulling the trigger, it's going to go straight like a square. Just like this, this, and that. Some of the things they don't tell you when they teach you to draw hands, if they teach you to draw hands. Usually people don't get into detail, this much detail about anything. They, t they show you the basic and then let you go. They don't break it down. And this is why I started to teach because... I had to learn this stuff for myself. Nobody really showed me. So once I learned it, I, I noticed a lot of people, because I used to teach, and I noticed a lot of people didn't show people how to draw, or they didn't point stuff out about drawing. They just said, draw this, draw this, draw this, draw that. There you go. Go home. Give me your money, and uh, I'll see you later. But they didn't say why this did this, or why this did that, or why that did that, or why that did that. Going back in time, I used to take the martial arts. I studied for about 17 years. And one of the things that, one of the styles, I took five different styles. So one of the styles I took was Shaolin Kung Fu. And in all of your martial arts techniques, you have to learn, well in karate, it's a kata, it's a form in, in Kung Fu. You learn the form where you move this way, you move that way, you move this way. And a lot of the students would come and they would say, they wouldn't say anything. They just learn this, learn that, and learn that, and I'm good to go. Or they're good to go. But when every time he would show me something, it's like, you do this. And I said, okay, why am I doing this? And he would say, oh, you're doing this to block that. I was like, oh, so why am I doing this? He said, you're doing this to set up for a kick. Oh, so I was really good at it because I knew what I was doing or how that position should be because I knew that this was blocking something where most people just throw it out oh throw it out and I throw the next one out but I'm like no it's blocking so it has to be this way so but I was always I needed to know why something worked and I guess this is probably why I became a good teacher blowing my own horn but yeah this is just, this is just me it's just me so but why don't I have a hundred thousand views on my videos I don't know I'm still trying to figure that out Maybe I'm not hitting the right button or going to the right place, but anyway, I'll keep going. So, what do we did? We did the front, we did the back of the hand, we did the
palm of the hand. We did the under. Let's do the over. Over. Let's get another piece of paper. Let's do over. So again, draw your weapons. I think this is probably one of the easiest ones. This one and the, 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 this one is probably the easiest ones to do. So draw your weapon and you're looking down at it. So the hand, when you look down at the hand, I have to check my camera. You look down at the hand. The hand is more like this, that triangle shape, like that. Just Okay, so if you did a whole triangle, almost like the foot, cut it in half and then do like that. And this is what I do to the foot. If you turn that upside down, and I'll take this side and then put that little toe over here. And that's your foot. And if you wear some long pants, it look like a foot. And you can put a heel on the shoe. You put the shoelaces. And then you have, you have a foot. So anyway, this is that shape like that. So from here, you have your thumb is going to be on this side. So you're going to have that palm here. But you're working with this shape here. You have your fingers going to come out here. And you're gonna have that curve, here's your finger, you're gonna have that curve, which is a web, and your thumb is gonna be out here. So, here is the gun from the top. So, it's going to fit into this. So, you're gonna have that shape pretty much. What did I just do? <laughs> this shape. And again, you have to adjust your um, sizes, size of the hand, and so forth. And as I said, this. You're going to have this finger, since you're at the top, you're going to see that finger. So this finger is going to come out and go into that trigger guard. And I hope that's called a trigger guard because all you gunners are going to just dog me for wanting to collect guns but not knowing the name of it. Now again, just like this, you're going to see that knuckle. You have this come up and it goes back, but you're gonna see this knuckle here come out and go all the way back. This is gonna come up like this and stop right there. This is gonna go and form the rest of the hand. Again, pointing in that direction. This is gonna come out and then point and then bend here and then bend here. So second, let's do this. We got this here. Let's do the top. This finger, you, got, you have that web, since I'm doing the right hand. This part here is called the web because it's like, called the web. It's gonna curve around into your thumb. So it's gonna curve around here, and then you have that part, the part of your palm. So if you cut the thumb off, it's gonna curve around into that, like that. Because that palm is holding the other part of the gun, and your gun always goes back behind the palm. This is why they design them, and you can design your own gun. They design it with that curve because it sits back on your hand. So I guess when it shoots, you have something more grip to hold on to. So this is your palm or your, your web. Your gun is gonna actually come back into that. All right, so this is your first finger going into the trigger guard. Right, what's wrong with you? One, two, three joint, three bends. Your second one is gonna come there, one, two, three bends. Your third one is gonna come in, there's your second one here. Your third one is gonna come inside of it. You won't see this, you won't see any of this because your gun is going to cover it, but just for the sake of drawing, your third one's gonna come in, not this far, right here, here, not this far, here, and then curve. And your fourth one is going to do the same one, same thing. Not this far, but shorter than that, like that. That's going to be your fingers. And of course, your thumb is going to come down. You have your two pieces here, break it here, and then it's going to go bend in to hold that part of the gun, like that. But as I said, you won't see these fingers, but you know what it looks like now. You will just see your top of your gun. You won't even see this. You just see here on out. So, you 
You won't see any of that. Let us say that's the easiest thing because if you have this here, you have this joint coming here, you have this finger coming out and then in, and then you have your thumb, which comes, I'm trying to do it, but the gun, actually the gun actually in your hand. You have the thumb that comes out, maybe not that far out, you have your part of your finger, and you have this holding it. So that's what you will see when you do that hand. And then however your rail is on your on your gun. You might have some side to your gun. Whatever, you know, silencer. It's 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 up to you to um the joint that been it's up to you to design your gun. That's what I say. You should spend more time designing your weapon than you should do trying to get your hand to look right. So I think that that covers it. Two, four, six. I had two, one, two, three, four, five, and I did the bottom one. So I'm missing something. An angle. Okay, yeah, that that one angle. A lot of times. An angle. So join the hand. Join the hand what, Brian? Join the hand. It's going to be in perspective. As I said, with where is it? Where is it? Where is it? With something. I don't know. It's in, it's in here somewhere. Your fingers. That is a box. Okay, so if I did this, this it's hard to try to explain some things and I don't like putting up videos just to show you how I can draw I like to put up videos to show you how you should draw or could draw so okay this maybe it'll come out later usually this part right here this part right here is more of a almost a triangle here so if I'm drawing a hand and it's hard for me to draw something without having a purpose and I guess that's why I was so inquisitive in the martial arts. What's the purpose of doing that? I'll do this. This little piece of a triangle here. That's the back of this hand. And then I'll have the fingers here. And that's just an easy way. Because I used to draw hands round and then I'll do fingers. But no, it, it takes on that shape. And then you do your fingers however. So if I'm holding a gun up at an angle... Use your squares and your lines like you tell everybody to do. And then of course this is just a box. A box is more than a box. Rectangles. And that's how you start drawing weapons. You start out with rectangles and then you round it off. Same thing here as if I did a trigger guard. Now I'm going to try to make this hand fit in this gun because lately I've been having troubles. So, okay, drop this down a little bit just because. Now I will do this. I will put that rectangle or that triangle, half triangle here. Then that hand, that finger, one joint, second joint goes inside of it, third joint, it depends. Now, one thing, if you're pulling the trigger, this finger is not going to go into that guard, into that trigger guard. It's going to actually come out a little bit. Look at the camera, Brian. It's going to come out and in, so it's not going to just go into it like that. It's going to be out a little bit like that. So. I don't know what point I was making, but <laughs> so from the, from this little half little triangle, then I will do my fingers coming in at an angle. And then, of course, it's too big. So let me shrink it down a little bit because this finger should have been smaller because I want this hand to fit this gun. So bring that up. One, two, three is better. 
three, four, even this finger is a little bigger. Comes out and then in to that gun. Curve this around a little bit. Curve that palm around. This comes out and in. Out and in. And you won't see, because of that angle, you won't see the bend. You won't see the other bends of that finger. Of that finger? Yeah. And then push down. So let me ink this so you can see exactly what in the world I'm talking about. Again, you have this finger comes up and that, and you won't see this knuckle because the only time you see knuckles, as I say, is when it's bent. Same thing here, you see the knuckle here, you see that knuckle here. So this is going to come down and around, this will come down and around, this will come down and around. And because you're pushing, remember I said this, this little piece comes out and because something is pushing on it, it's going to come out a little bit more. So you're going to bring it down and out, curve out like that. Then you're going to have this piece here, which should be, I guess, going in that direction. And you have that, and then you have your other part of your finger. And it's keeping it round. That's the hard part about it. This is going to come up into that finger like that. It's going to come up into that finger. This is not going to go all the way up. It's not going to go all the way up. And then you have your hand that fits your gun, because you have your... Um, guard that fits between here, trigger guard, and this part here which rides on the back of your hand, and then, then you start designing your gun or however you choose to design your gun. And that should be the fun part of doing the whole I have a weapon kind of thing going on. I have a weapon kind of thing going on. I have a weapon in my hand. Like so, yeah, so, yeah, there you go. One, two, three, and of course the thumb, will you see the thumb? No, you won't see the thumb because the thumb is gonna be around here and it's gonna be about right in here somewhere. The thumb is gonna be like down in here somewhere. So you won't, you won't see that thumb. So a lot of times this is probably one of the most popular angles that people draw guns when you've got a gun on you. So, yeah. What hand is that? That's the right hand. So if that's the right hand, he won't be turned that way. He'll be turned this way. Yeah, drawing tutorial. No, that's the that's the back of the hand, so it would be turned that way. See, see, Brian, you're messing up already. So it will be the, uh, the opposite direction as where I was going the first time, looking at the wrong way. So you can have the head here, the rest of the body here, shoulder, that comes down here, your lats, your other hand, which you could be holding a, a, a sword or knife or something. But that's the next video. So yeah. I'm stupid like that. And because I like comics, I'm still doing this, which is killing time for the video. So yeah, there you go. That should be it. So these are your your main angles to do your guns so I mean you can screenshot that if you uh, think that you're gonna have trouble and just kind of follow what I did with all of these things here so that you can be able to draw 
hands and I'm slowing down. I don't know why I'm slowing down. Maybe I'm hungry. So, yeah, on that note, I will leave you guys and uh, I'll start preparing the next video, which will be swords and knives. How a hand holds a sword and a knife. So, with that, I will see you guys at the next lesson. So, art students, keep drawing. And this is just a side note, side piece for anybody that's wondering where did I get those guns. This is a, a, a Crossman double down and it comes with two guns. So as I said, I never shot it. And I put the gun back in the box to make it look like something. And it came comes with the two uh, air cartridges, some BBs, and then as I say, the two guns. So I never really shot them. So yeah, it's just, and a, a, a um, target. So yeah, two guns. And it wasn't really like a lot of money. I want to say like 30 some dollars, maybe 30, between 30 and $60 or something like that. So yeah, for, for those who were just wondering where I got it from, check Amazon because it's been a while since I had, I had it for a while, over a year or probably about two years now. So as I never shot it, I just bought it for reference because it's good to have, you know, when you get hold your, your character has two guns, it's just good for reference. So, yeah, that's where I got the gun from, or that's what the gun is. So, all right, that's it. See ya.